I wanted to come in and give you a couple of tips. I'm working on the red tabletop. This is the garage sale find that I got. This is the table now. The legs are painted black in a DIY little black dress. The top is painted in Dixie Belle um, honky tonk red, which doesn't need a top coat. I could leave it alone, but because this is a tabletop, it's going to need it's going to get a lot of use and putting a good top coat on is important putting about three coats of a good top coat on is important i've chosen to use um dixie bell gator hide because it's the strongest of the uh top coats that i know of um and with the water-based ones without having to use any oil-based something which could yellow it and things like that but what i've done since i put the paint on I've got two coats of paint on here. I'll let those dry. I've got uh, one coat of top coat on. And then, where did I put it? Then you could use one of these little sanding pads if you have one. This is a Dixie Bell one. I think it's $1.50. I brought it out of there. This is kind of fine. But I had uh, this already available. This was a 220 grit. I think they recommend usually using like a 300 grit, which is about the same as like a brown paper bag. You could do this with a brown paper bag. But I've already went over it and just lightly sanded it. And what I'm trying to do with that is just create um, some grip between the layers because when you're adding a top coat and you're adding a uh, sort of a slick harder surface on here, it's it's not as much grab on there for the next coat to go down so i did that and then i took my trusty rag that i always have here and i got all of the the dust off which some of it was red dust some of it was the uh gator hide dust and now i'm about to i'm going to go ahead and open this and use it because i have it here this is three bucks this is a dixie bell uh blue sponge and these things are famous people go out of their minds whenever you run low on them but uh it's a very smooth uh sponge some people even put like a stocking over this like a lady's knee high or something like that to give it an even smoother texture i like it because it has this little bit of grip and i'm one of those girls that likes to play in the mud but don't like to get my fingers muddy kind of a thing so I'm going to put a glove on here in a minute but if you don't have one of these I also have this which I would have used if I wouldn't have had just had some of these come in and this is a car wash sponge that's also a very um finely hold I don't know what else you would call it it's also a very very fine maybe not quite as fine as this blue one but it's a very fine uh sponge so if i was going to use this i would take i would probably have used a bread knife because it's a good serrated knife and cut it in half at least this way if not again this way and then used that i applied my first coat of top coat with the brush and that leaves a little bit of brush marks on here but on your final finish you don't want a whole lot of brush marks but i wanted a few in the beginning because i am going to age this a little bit with some dark waxes or, or something uh, later on and I wanted a little bit of, a little bit of ridges and things in there to grab the darker that I'm going to use over it but for the rest that'll remain there for the rest remaining coats I'm going to use uh, the sponge so I want I wanted to show you one more thing this is this is new too and this is a, a scrubby soap which is really really cool this is by Dixie Bell too and I a lot of times put use the uh, charcoal soap or whichever soap and do my brushes in my hand but this has a little bit of a rough loofah type, sur loofah type surface on the uh, top of it and so it you know it helps the brush to get cleaner faster I have emptied some of my uh, top coat in here and I've swirled it around. That's my amount of stirring because it does need to be stirred, but you don't want to shake it because you don't want a whole lot of uh, air and things getting in the uh, in the finish. But this is easier for me to stick my hand in to get a little bit and to put it on here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Here's about how much I got on the sponge. And I'm going to start at one end and glide to the other end with a semi-firm tension. Just re-dipping each time about the same amount. I'm 
I'm going to do these three edges, then come back to the center and then get the piece in front of me so I don't lean over on any of it. Get uh, top coat on my belly. I'm too excited to see what it's going to look like with some of the black in it to wage. So, if it blows up on me, I'll share that with you too. We're always here to, to learn. Anyways, this is not, this sponge is not leaving marks the way that the brush did. So, uh, but I still have a little bit of ridges in there, just enough to uh, have a little bit of tooth to grab. And I put it in here so my hand will reach in easier. So this is still just my gator hide. So now I've went all the way around it with the uh, gator hide and the soft sponge. I'm going to actually, I'm going to put this down in here and just let it float and leave it in there. Put the lid on here and that will keep it from uh, hardening up because I'm going to need it again for another coat in a little while. So I'm excited. If I decide to come back, I'm at the point right now, I'm deciding whether to use the wax on it and then worry about my next coat of gator hide adhering well or whether to create myself a glaze that's kind of where i'm at right now i think i might and i could create that glaze with gator hide or with big top uh the diy product i have the liquid patina here in a small container and i would mix a little bit of my black paint in with that and then use that to get in these crevices and to go over the whole thing and then you wipe some of it back off so this will have to be completely dry first that's probably the route i'm going to go because i'm going to be so mad at myself if i get amy to come up here and help us with the stencil and i've jacked something up because i was in too big of a hurry to use the wax because i can always come back and add wax to darken up other areas better after uh, we do the stencil and i can do the glaze thank y'all for watching and whatever i decide to do next i'll come in and share with you and share the tips and techniques on that and that way if you get ready to do a piece like this i hope that you'll share the pictures and the progress with us and i'll talk to you soon bye-bye